Welcome to another installment of Chip Amp Theater. Hey guys, I have a pretty interesting audio chip amp. I think you'll like this one. Well, it's Wednesday evening, and a couple days ago, Monday, when I rolled out of bed, I didn't even know this existed. Well, Monday evening, I got on DigiKey's website. I usually shop at Mouser, but haven't been on DigiKey for a while, so I went there. I was looking uh, if they had the these Cree LEDs. I talk about my other videos. Well, they had these for uh, 50, 60 cents less than Mouser. So I bought them. And I started looking around at their IC audio amplifiers they had in stock. And this thing came up. I've never seen it before. It's an LA4425A. It's a it's rated at five watts, and it's very interesting. It requires very little parts, and I think a lot of people might be interested in it because you might be looking for an amplifier chip that does better than one or two watts, but you don't need anything like an LM1875 or that's 20 or 25 watts. You know something. Uh, in between maybe something that does 5 watts. And this is inter also interesting because about a year and a half ago ST Microelectronics canned their TDA2003 chip which was a very uh, popular long running chip amplifier. It was a 5 pin eh, roughly about the same power uh, meant for car stereo and actually, this is what this is meant for. So, we're going to take a look at it and evaluate it and listening test. You know, all the same tests I run on all these chips. See what this thing is like. Quick look at the data sheet. On semiconductor, or ON, I don't know how you pronounce that. Also found the... Pretty much identical data sheet from Sanyo. So I'm not sure who is the actual developer of this IC or when it was developed, but you know, it could be new. I like I say I haven't seen it. I'm not always looking for these things, but you know, it there it is. Um wide supply voltage range, five to sixteen volts, that's kind of handy. And if you want to see all the other information, just download it. Uh, here's the curves. Yeah, distortion's not too bad. Here's 1%. So most of the power range, this is the power band. And yeah, it's pretty low. Of course, it's going to shoot up when you start clipping. Frequency band. And it dies below 0.1, which is very good. But then it starts rising at higher frequencies. But, you know, 1%'s up here. And at the real high frequencies, you can't hear the harmonics anyway. So, you know, it's not a hi-fi type amplifier where the, you know, my criteria is it's got to be below 0.1 across the power band and the audio frequency band to be considered hi-fi by me. And uh, this doesn't meet it, but still the distortion performance for a chip amp is very good and uh, well the main attraction of this thing here this little uh, diagram which is not really let's see here not really the diagram oh here it is hardly any parts it's not a bridge amp so it does need a output coupling capacitor in the input and you know this is just a supply bypass that's it no you know there's no feedback to gain set internally so you don't have to mess with that there's no mute pins you have to deal with which always annoys me and I don't like mute it's a function I don't use but of course with the 
A lot of chip amps today, they have mute pins and standby for power reduction and all that. But yeah, well, let's uh, move on and uh, take a look at the chip itself and see what it sounds like. Oh, I almost got ahead of myself here. I wanted to show you the layout of the chip using a d depiction of the actual IC here. Pin 1 is the input. Pin 2 is the signal ground. Pin 3 is the power ground. That's kind of nice because they're separating the grounds for you. You just want to jumper them together. These chips, um, internally, the front end of the amplifier might have the ground separated like this one, but you have to jumper them together or the IC won't work. So just solder those together at the point where the pins enter your uh, socket board or if you etch your own board, just tie them together and run the signal out that way. No big deal. Power ground is for your supply voltage negative or um, you know the return and speaker return. Pin 4 is your output and you have your coupling capacitor. You can use a 1000 microfarad or a 2200. I would lean towards the 2200 if you're using 4 ohm speakers that can uh, handle deep bass. Otherwise the uh, 1000 microfarad would roll it off too early. And of course pin 5 is your supply input, your, or your voltage supply. And just decouple that with a capacitor. You can also have a film capacitor across there if you want. But make sure that is very close to the chip. Always decouple very close to the chip. And I am showing some optional components. Um, if you're not going to have a potentiometer control, I would recommend putting a 10K or you know, depending on what input source you're using. But what that does is prevent, you know, the chip from picking up noise or even picking up its own output and oscillating. And you can also add a, like a 500 picofarad across the input here. And that will filter RF. But, um... You know, that does add some components, but I think for good design, it's good to have those. Well, simple enough. Let's move on to the next part and give it a listen. Okay. Very easily set up on a little socket board there. Put a little heat sink on it. And play some music. I'm running the wire down to my little portable speaker. I'm connecting both channels together, 8 ohms per side, so it's a 4 ohm load. And I'll record the audio on this thing. Sounds fine to me. I don't hear any distortion, good frequency response. You do hear the guy in the background yammering on about materialism and uh, dwindling Earth's resources, which I do have a position on. I uh, think we are kind of hurting our own planet, but yeah, that's an argument for another video, I guess. I do notice this. Don't know if the camera picks that up. There is a little bit of background hiss. That's because this amplifier runs at a very high gain. It's something like 45 dB, whatever the, the uh, data sheet says. I don't recall. The good thing is that's plenty of gain that it works just fine with music players. You know, if you ever plug your music player into a you know, regular home stereo, 
like the tape input or auxiliary input you probably notice how you have to turn everything up real loud to get any volume out because you know these things usually put up uh, put out about 500 millivolts RMS maximum before they start clipping and uh, you know that's kind of a low signal so that's one big positive with this is that uh, it works great with music players and has plenty of gain but again having that high gain especially with efficient speakers you might hear some background hiss okay well let's move on and take a look at the power output by doing some power measurements okay I have the non-inductive 4 ohm resistors connected to the output I'm scoping right at the uh, load there 1k input and I set the voltage measured right at the pins of the chip while it's putting out the signal so it's exactly at 15 volts It's probably the maximum you'd want to run this chip since it says the maximum is 16 volts so now I'll adjust this so it's clipping there you can see the blue is the uh, spectrum analyzer mode so we'll tune out those little peaks there as those we can get them right to the point where it starts to clip I'd say that's pretty good 4.18 okay so punch 4.18 in square it divide, divided by the load resistance 4 ohms and we're putting out 4.36 watts Yeah, that's about what I expect of clean power. Now, like I always say, these circuit boards have some connection resistance, and the actual power output could be a little bit higher, maybe four and a half, or you know, maybe a bit more than that. So, uh, well, interesting little chip amp. Plenty of gain for using with music players. Works great with 12 volt supplies. In fact, you can go down to 2 ohms if you want. So it makes a good replacement to the TDA2003, which was discontinued a while back. Low part count. Sounds pretty good. A couple negative things with it is, like I mentioned before, it does have some you know, background hiss. But, you know, if you compare that to the hiss in actual audio recordings if you listen to like quieter music orchestral music or classical you know it uh, the recorded music probably has quite a bit more hiss though one other negative I haven't mentioned is it does draw a lot of quiescent current so it's not something you want to use with like a 9 volt battery um, just sitting idle it draws about 70 milliamps well the TDA 2003 would draw somewhere around 40 or 50 so it, you know it is a little bit more but it's it's nothing serious you could still use it with a you know larger battery like this but again something you're not going to use with like a 9 volt battery because of the higher quiescent drain nice wide supply range 5 to 16 volts you, know, you can use it at night or I'm sorry use it at 9 volts and you'll probably get about a watt and a half into 4 ohm loads but it's really meant for you know around 12 volts so you can get 3 to 4 watts out of it in the 12 to 15 volt range so I give this a recommendation and thanks again for watching